You know, we talk about the hour that we're in and national conversation. And I remember, it just seems like a few months ago, the Me Too movement. You remember that? I mean, I realize that things come and things go. Some things need to stay around a little longer and be talked about a little longer. But there were trigger points. There were uh, some courageous, mostly women, who were uh, telling stories about the mistreatment of women, the sexual exploitation of women, uh, their own stories of pain, uh, ranging from harassment uh, to brutal rape. And as one would tell, others would tell. People would find their voice, women and some men, and, and they would tell their stories. And in that togetherness, they would not feel alone and as vulnerable. At least they would find the courage to be vulnerable and tell their stories. Now, the rest of us were divided among the clueless, the unbelieving, the, the participants, the I don't want to believe, uh, not expo any range of possibilities. Uh, and always, when a national or international conversation uh, begins to emerge because of an event, because of an, a public event, or because of, of a, an event that is being made public because of our technology, and there's a bandwagon, the stories are not new. The pain is not new. The experience is not new. And, and when people say, me too, what they're saying is, oh no, that happened to me as well. Maybe we need to talk about this. Maybe we need to pay attention to this. And the call for the rest of us is to listen. And if we are, uh, if we are the representatives of Jesus, if, if we are carrying uh, that uh, calling and spirit in our lives where we are the presence of Christ. Uh, we need to first uh, use our ears and listen our hearts and engage and realize that almost every time someone tells you their story at least they're telling their story as truthfully as they've observed it. And it is always true that we observe from our own point of view. But we need to uh, line up with the pain of the stories that people are telling in this hour and have a bias toward believing those stories and entering into the pain and at least half of what we're inclined to say, either because we're fragile or confused or hurt or we're afraid or threatened or, or feel like, well, what am I going to do with my story and my memories? We can talk about that another day. We can worry about that another day. But this is an hour that God has entered into. And He is inviting our larger community into. And the church should be at the front of the line of saying, let's sit down and listen non-critically, without easy answers, and enter into that pain and become better informed and better aware and, and, and oversaturated. And let's just do it because this is not a new brokenness. This is an intergenerational brokenness. And systemic racism is not, does not require uh, individual, um, individuals 
deciding I'm going to hate somebody in order to participate in it. And we need to, we need to educate ourselves on that and come to understand it. it. It just has to stop being the responsibility of the people who've been wounded to do all the educating. And it's time for us to do some honest, fearless self-educating. I mean me, white people, Caucasians or whatever I am, but in the, in the culture, we're perceived as one or another or something else. And, and you know, it's about that perception. This is what makes it real. It's not genetics. It's not that there's a difference in how we're put together. It's that if, if, if I walk into the room with my African-American brother and we're treated different, whether I notice it or not, that's a reality. It's a reality for me. It's a reality for him. I ask you to, to be sensitive, prayerful, open, and to realize that this is not the moment to be defensive. This is the moment to ask, where is God in this moment? And why is God allowing this conversation and allowing us to see things we've never seen before? They are not new. They are not being manufactured. It's not a bandwagon that people are jumping on. I've walked, I've walked this road with many friends, and I'm, I'm not bragging about that. I've just been blessed to be able to walk alongside these stories with people I love and trust for decades, since I was in high school, since I was blessed to be in a minority, in a majority um, school setting. Changed my life. I'm so grateful for school busing. It opened my eyes. They were already wedging open, but gave me a new awareness. Enter into the moment, and only then will there be healing. Let's not even talk about the healing yet. I mean, we can allude to it. We can always hold out hope for it. But let's don't be too quick to fix things until the diagnosis is truly understood. That's my two cents worth for this. It's really on my heart. It's really burdening me. Burdening me. And uh, if the truth is known, and the truth will be known, because I'm telling you right now, it burdens me a whole lot more than what's going on in this hospital bed. It grieves my heart a whole lot more than any of those things. It's far more important to me than anything I'm going through. But you know what? Just like God's with me here, God's with us in the midst of all this. Blessings on you. God bless you. <laughs>